Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In a previous video, we talked about resistive voltage dividers. And in this video, we will talk about capacitive voltage dividers. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, Upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. When we apply a voltage to two capacitors in series, the voltage divides between the two capacitors. For example, if your input voltage is 10 volts, maybe 8 volts will go to capacitor 1 and the remaining 2 volts will go to capacitor 2. Of course, the precise division of the voltage depends on the capacitances and the formulas are given here. For example, the voltage between the terminals of capacitor 1 is equal to C2 divided by C1 plus C2 times the input voltage V and the voltage between the terminals of capacitor 2 will be C1 divided by C1 plus C2 times the input voltage. Of course, the sum of V1 plus V2 must be equal to the input voltage V. Let's make the test with these two capacitors, one of 3300 microfarads and the other 470 microfarads. However, let's measure the capacitances directly since, as we know, electrolytic capacitors have large tolerances. Let's see the first capacitor, 3300 microfarads. This shows a capacitance of 3.04 millifarads or 3000 and 40 microfarads. And the second one, which is 470 microfarads, this has a capacitance of 538 microfarads. Let's make the calculations using an input voltage of 10 volts and the values of capacitance that we use measured. So, using the formula, for B1, we obtain 1.5 volts at capacitor 1. And for the voltage at capacitor 2, we obtain 8.5 volts. So let's now measure it with the multimeter. Let's now charge the capacitors at 10 volts. I'm going to connect them to the power supply. And now I'm going to measure the voltage at each capacitor. Between the terminals of capacitor 1, we have 1.51 volts, pretty close to the 1.5 that we calculated. And between capacitor 2, we have 8.47 volts, 46. So, as you can see, the voltage divides between the two capacitors according to the formula that we previously give. You can also use alternating current. Here I have this transformer and let's measure the value of voltage of the transformer output. We have 22 volts AC. And now I have this capacitive divider. Of course, you cannot use electrolytic capacitors these are non-polarized capacitors. So let's charge the capacitors and measure the voltages at each one. In the first capacitor, which is one microfarad, the other is 4.7 microfarads, we have 18.3 volts. And the rest of the voltage must be in the other capacitor and indeed we have 3.73 volts. 
However, a capacitive voltage divider will not work if you want to obtain a voltage different from that of the input and from there derive a constant current. Let's see with an example, I'm going to connect the divider to the power supply, 10 volts. Remember that this capacitor is at 1.5 volts and this other is at 8.5. And now I'm going to connect a, char uh, a load, this incandescent lamp, to the capacitor that is at 1.5 volts. So let's see what happens with the lamp when I connect it to the capacitor. As you could see, it only stays on for a fraction of a second, even when the voltage divider is still connected to the power supply. The lamp only lights during the time that the capacitor is discharging. Now, if we check the voltages that remain in the capacitors, let's see, this was at 1.5 volts and now after connecting the lamp, it is at 9.64 volts, almost all the voltage, which was 10 volts, and the other only has 0.26 volts. Let's figure out what is happening. Here we have the two capacitors in series connected to the power supply or battery, positive and negative. And remember that a capacitor is nothing more than two metal plates very close to each other, separated by a dielectric. Now, the free electrons that are at this plate of the capacitor will be attracted to the positive of the battery. Therefore, this plate will be positive because it lacks electrons. The electrons go through the circuit and accumulate in this other plate of the other capacitor, sorry, electrons accumulate and we will have a negative charge at this side of this capacitor and naturally here we will have negative charge and positive here. The electrons here only redistribute. Okay, now what happens when we connect a lamp to the terminals of this capacitor? A lamp is essentially a resistor so, we have a potential difference here, so a current will flow through the resistor. The electrons from this side will move to the other side of the capacitor and the lamp will shine. But only during the time that the capacitor discharges. When the electrons finish their travel to the other side, the lamp goes off. But now, this situation is equivalent to this circuit, a single capacitor with a resistor in series with the battery. And in this situation, the voltage in the capacitor will be the same as the voltage of the source. That is the reason why in the capacitor where we did not connect the lamp, we obtained practically the same voltage as that of the input. And in the other capacitor, where the lamp was, we got almost zero volts. An application of capacitive voltage dividers is to measure high voltage AC. For example, this transformer generates an output of, judging from the arc, approximately 5 to 10,000 volts AC. But let's use a capacitive voltage divider to measure it properly. I will use this capacitive voltage divider, which is made not by two, but by 10 capacitors in series. Since all of the capacitors are the same, except of course by the tolerances of fabrication, then the total voltage will divide equally among each capacitor. So for example, if the transformer has an output of 5000 volts, each capacitor will be charged at 500 volts. And you can measure that 
with a normal multimeter. Here I have the transformer connected to the voltage divider and the multimeter in the AC volts measuring setting. Now I will measure the voltage at any of the capacitors, for example the first one, and is 407 volts. It should be roughly the same at any capacitor. There will be small differences because of the tolerances, 390 here. This other one has 392. So we have around 400 volts at each capacitor. That means that the total voltage is 400 times 10, 4,000 volts, which is the output of the transformer. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for visiting my channel. Hope you liked the video and see you in the next one.